Good morning, Facebook friends. Helen Arcantu here, CEO of the YWCA of Northern New Jersey. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am so happy to be with you here today. Um, I, you know, woke up this morning, you know, beyond thrilled to know that I was going to spend some time with two of my sheroes today. Um, these are women that are that have been strong friends to the YW, incredible friends to our community. Um, and, you know, civil rights activists and doing so much, so much to fight systemic racism in our community. Um, we are so grateful to have Ms. Barbara Giarmo, Ms. Theodora Lacey with us today. And um, those of you who are YWTV regulars have seen them both before here, and I know you've seen them in the community, um, but we're so grateful to have them join us again today. Welcome, welcome, ladies. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you. So I want to tell you both about um, a, some wonderful, um, important events that are going on that you all should be connected to. But before then, let me give you a little bit of background on both of my guests today. Um, both um, Theodora Lacey, as I said, um, is an iconic and fearless leader in her own right. Um, she will be co-chairing this event on August 21st um, alongside Arnold Brown. Um, both um, Miss Lacey and Arnold Brown are um, actually, uh, we have racial justice awards named after them because of the tremendous work um, that they've been doing their whole life uh, in the civil rights um, area. Um, and they also will be working alongside another amazing activist, Miss Barbara Giarmo, as I said, and together the three of them are focusing on mobilizing voters in our community to create positive change. Um, and with that, um, as I said, these trailblazers have started their work. Uh, you know, they've all been doing this work for for you know some time. Um, Miss Theodora Lacey um, is a native of Montgomery, Alabama. She grew up in the segregated South and encountered many forms of racism. Um, she worked closely with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during the famed Montgomery bus boycott in 1955. And in the summer of 1957, she and her husband, Archie L. Lacey, traveled throughout the counties in Alabama, researching voter registration, fraud, and injustice in the political system in Alabama. Their research supported litigation that changed voting rights for Blacks. Theodora has been a resident of Teaneck for over 60 years and was a teacher for over 40 years. Um, she and her husband played a major role um, in the successful integration of the Teaneck Public Schools and are cited um, for those efforts in the book, Triumph in a White Suburb, written by Reginald Damarell. Uh, Ms. Lacey was the co-founder of Teens Talk About Racism, an annual diversity conference for high school students throughout Burton County and was appointed by Governor Christie to serve on the Martin Luther King Jr. State Commission. Um, she presently serves on the Teaneck International Film Festival, the Township Historical Preservation Commission, the Historical Society, the African American Advisory Board for Bergen County. She is the chair for the Martin Luther King Observance Committee. She is the co-chair of the Martin Luther King um, Monument Committee, which in 2014 erected a large, larger than life-size statue of Dr. King on Hackensack River, um, fairly Dickinson, on the Hackensack Riverside of the Fairley Dickinson campus in Hackensack, New Jersey. And she is the co-chair of the countywide Juneteenth Committee. And she is the um, recipient of numerous awards, including the Racial Justice Award from the YWCA of um, our uh, local association and was honored by the Bergen Record as one of the most intriguing people. Um, she's also honored and humbled to be named um, of a new school in Teaneck, the Theodora Smiley Lacey School. And we have to talk about that too. <laughs> um, Theodora is also a member of the Central Unitarian Church in Paramus and recently co-authored a children's book. We had um, Theodora and her um, granddaughter, Tori Murphy on talking about the grocery game. Um, and we also have, again, the, the, I could spend the whole show just talking about the accomplishments of, of both of these two. Um, Ms. Jar Barbara Giarma, who is an equal rights advocate, she resides in Bergen County with her husband, Tony. She grew up in the 1950s and the 1960s through the civil rights movement and the beginning of the women's and the gay rights movement. She embarked on what became a 36-year career in the phone company, as she calls it, which we now know as Verizon. 
um, and was part of the new corporate culture that recognized the value of celebrating diversity. She led a team that introduced the first bilingual telephone book in New Jersey and helped Verizon develop its diversity policy. Barbara received a number of awards for her work and among them, the Tribute to Women in Industry Award from the YWCA of, um, and then of Bergen County. Um, and she also received the Theodora Lacey Racial Justice Award in a real full circle moment, I know, um, which um, we also were so happy to bestow upon her. After her retirement from Verizon, she became the special events manager at the YWCA, organizing many events, including our annual Stand Against Racism events and numerous networking events for women. She firmly believes, in the words of Dr. King, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Um, these words have come to have deep personal meaning for her when her son came out as being gay when he was only 13 years old in 1996. And in order to ensure that Chris had the same rights as others, she joined and became president of PFLAG, which is Parents, Families, and Friends of Lesbians and Gays um, in Burton County chapter. And she's... Um, advocated with Chris and her husband, Tony, in Washington, D.C., and in Trenton. She is the co-chair of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Birthday Observance Committee of Bergen County and has served as a fundraising chair of the Dr. Martin Luther King Monument Committee. Um, Barbara helps coordinate many events that honor and celebrate the legacy of Dr. King. And Barb, you're going to be on, let's see, when's the show? You're going to, you just tape. Saturday night, Saturday night on PBS. On, Saturday night um, on PBS, everyone. You should uh, um, set your, uh, what, do you, what are we setting these days? Not VCRs, not DV, I guess DVRs, right? I guess what we're setting um, to see Barbara uh, is going to be part of a, um, an in-depth conversation with women at different ages and stages of their life um, about the impact of Roe versus Wade. And um, I'm so excited to see um her part of that so that's going to be on pbs at we know seven o'clock is that what it is no i'm not sure what time um it's called her story um joanna gagas's uh show um it's uh the first part in a series that she's doing so uh i know it'll be i'm not sure what time saturday i know 10 o'clock saturday morning it will be on again so great great so everyone keep you know watch your um you know watch your schedules and then and then join us um we are going to talk a little bit about the Dr. King Committee, um, and Ms. Lacey will join us again in a moment. Um, until then, Barb, let's talk a little bit about the actual Dr. Martin Luther King Birthday Committee. Um, I know we're going to be talking about an event that you all are sponsoring. Um, that's important. But um, for those that aren't familiar with the committee, let's tell them about it and tell them also how they can get involved. Oh, well, thank you, Helen. Uh, this committee, this birthday committee, was started uh, shortly after the assassination of Dr. King. Um, I know Theodora was instrumental in the beginnings of it, which started out as um, just a candlelight vigil to celebrate uh, the life and the um, accomplishments of Dr. King. And it became such a wonderful community event that they decided to um, create an event every January on his birthday. So since uh, I don't know what year, Theodora was there at the beginning, I wasn't, but the beginning of um, these birthday celebrations in January have really blossomed into being such a phenomenal community event um, every year in January. And until the pandemic came, we would gather together in um, uh, various temples and churches and uh, big areas to um, recognize members of the community who um, have done some awesome work regarding equal rights. Um, students from high schools, we award scholarships. We have wonderful guest speakers on whatever topic we, the committee decides to focus on. Uh, the last couple of years though, I mean, we've, you know, any event we've done with Dr. King, we've really been focusing on the power of the vote and the importance of voting. And uh, we're really excited that again, this year um, at the monument, uh, we try to um, honor the uh, March on Washington every August when we can at our monument to Dr. King and uh, bring people from throughout the community uh, to come and to, you know, hear from others who will talk about why we need to vote, 
you know, what the vote does mean, um, especially these last uh, six or seven years, it's become more important that uh, people gather together and really understand how their vote, as minimal as it may seem to you, has, um, you know, a huge impact when everybody does it. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing and, and welcome back, Ms. Lacey. We were talking a little bit about, um, about first of all, the committee itself, um, how it started and, and its work. I don't know if there's anything that you want to share about that. And good morning, Ms. Nelly. We've got Nelly Jenkins joining us today, um, sharing her um, pride for you. And I know that you've got a big fan club, Ms. Lacey. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I apologize. So, one of these days, I'm going to become computer literate. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. I, I did want to thank you, Helen, and to thank the Y, because it truly takes a village to do this work. And it is a coming together with organizations like yours that we have been able to thrive. As a matter of fact, you brought us Barbara Giamo, who is really the engine behind much of the work that we did. We did indeed start, as Barbara indicated, uh, soon after the assassination of Dr. King. It was a candlelight memorial service that we started. And each year since that, we have been commemorating his life. I would like to add that we saw the need to do something here in Bergen County because at one of our programs in January, the annual Martin Luther King birthday observance, one of the recipients noticed that at the Circle of Honor at the courthouse, there was recognition of many atrocities like the Holocaust, the Irish man, and the Armenian crisis, but there was absolutely nothing about slavery. So mm. that kind of stirred up to begin to look at the county to see what role they could play in helping us communicate these equally as important occurrences in our country. So we established a rock band that clearly talks about the enslaved uh, mission in 1619. As a result of that, we also noticed that there were statues everywhere, none of which represent the African American community. And because I had worked with Dr. King through the years, I realized the importance of sharing his story. And so that kind of started was the beginning of uh, looking at helping the community to become aware of the contributions, not only of Dr. King, but of outstanding people in our community. And so we honor each year people who are doing work uh, to help to further the cause of equality in the community. Well, it, it's so important to um, be able to have organizations like yours that are um, looking closely at our community and seeing where we are not keeping, um, you know, educating, you know, our community on these important issues, making sure that, um, you know, again, the, the work that has been done, and I know we've talked about it here in, a, in our organization so often, the work that you all did to erect the amazing um, statue that is at Fairleigh Dickinson University um, and, you know, just mobilizing the community to be able to understand and support and use it as an opportunity for education and also for remembrance. So in places we don't want to go back to and places we want to keep moving forward on. Um, and unfortunately, we know in our country, we're still struggling with racism in a very, very, very big way. Um, we have made, you know, uh, you know, I, I understand that that, you know, we may have made some strides, but they're not enough. And um, people are still losing their lives. Um, the inequities are very, very prevalent. Our systems are still very fraught with, um, you know, significant inability to move forward in a way that uh, is, you know, equal for all. And unfortunately, people that look more like Barbara and I are still 
um, you know, more in power. And so these are all reasons as a community that we need to be invested in, um, you know, these organizations like yours, the, the, the gatherings, the, um, you know, making sure that we have the monuments and then making sure that events like what you're working on right now are so, so embraced um, because they will help us get closer to the change that we know we um, need for sure in this country. So let's talk about the event that's coming. Barb started to talk a little bit about it. Um, we know it's on Sunday, um, August 21st. Um, so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, how it came about um, to organize it. Is this an event that you, and uh, although I know I'm asking, are, is this an event you do annually? Is this a new event that you've organized this year? And, and if it's the latter, why did this year, you know, need, you know, need something, um, you know, like this important event to be pulled together? Well, I'll, I'll tell you that since the statue was um, installed um, on the Fairleigh Dickinson campus, which I have to say is probably the best place for it to be. It's in the center of education. Dr. King was um, an educator, you know, and certainly had a lot of young followers. And we just love having it there for young people to see. And since it start, since we erected the statue in 2014, I think once or twice we may have um, done something um, around his birthday, um, but it's in January in the winter and it was so cold that we said, you know, there must be another way that we can pull people together, another occasion or an anniversary that we'd like to celebrate. And we decided that the, um, our committee decided that the March on Washington would be a perfect, perfect opportunity to come and, you know, gather at uh, uh, the statue to talk about whatever issues, you know, are really in the uppermost um, of our community's mind right now. And as I did mention the last couple of years, voting um, is so important. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, democracy is on the ballot. And uh, we want to make sure that people understand the power of their vote, that people who are not registered have a chance to register, that um, we bring people to speak who have a personal stake and personal involvement in getting people to vote. Um, our guest speaker this year is Reshma Khan, and I'll let Theodora talk about her because Theodora actually worked on the committee, uh, One Town, One Vote, that we are going to be um, honoring um, on Sunday. So Theodora, maybe you can talk about your connection there. Okay. Uh, before I speak on the One Town, One Vote, I'm just reminded of 1957. I would never have thought that here in 2022 mm -hmm. that we would be working on the same issue, though it is different. When we travel throughout the counties in Alabama, you were not, blacks were not allowed to vote. There were more people voting than in those counties that were uh, not eligible to vote, so that we did the work in trying to determine who's on this is voting rolls and how do we get blacks to be involved. I surely thought by now that that issue would not rear its ugly head, but indeed it had different, but it's still here. There have been many ways and avenues that have been closed to uh, blacks being able to vote. And of course, you know the long history. We are now to the point that there are attempts to stop the voting line, not giving water to people who stand on line all day to vote. Mm. Anything, any, though that sounds trite, it is an opportunity to stop people from voting. In Teaneck, as in elsewhere in our country, somehow the urgency of voting kind of got lost that some people thought that that vote really didn't count and so they didn't bother to vote in teen as in other places voting in local issues was separate from national from the national voting day 
And so there were people like Rashima who thought that if we would have same day voting, the update that many people are given an opportunity to stay off from work or at least to leave work to go vote, that more people would be engaged. And so she helped to organize people in team to come up with the idea of changing the voting day. One town, one vote. And we're yeah. so proud of the work that she's done and look forward to but And we hope that the turnout will be increasingly larger than it's ever been. Well, uh, uh, what an amazing um, individual and how blessed we are to have all of you in our community to be, you know, focused, um, you know, as, you know, Barbara, you know, noted in, in, in her comment and, you know, interested to hear from, you know, both of you, because I, you know, we know that, um, as you said, you know, so many people sometimes feel like, oh, well, someone else is going to vote. I don't need to do that. <laughs> um, you know, someone else will take care of it. Uh, but we do know that every vote gets counted and every vote matters. And when you see some of the election results, you know, as they're getting counted and how close, you know, they can be, it, it really does remind you um, that that uh, everyone, you know, needs to needs to get out there. We have a lot of youth, you know, that are very now active in these conversations as well. Um, and, you know, many of them are voting now for the first time um, as well. And some of them aren't voting yet, but um, you know, we know still have the potential to be catalysts to get family members that can vote, you know, to the ballots. You know, what are some messages you have to our young people um, to, you know, talk to them a little bit from your perspectives, um, you know, generationally about why, um, you know, and right. how you know, they can help make the changes that, you know, unfortunately, as Miss Lacey said, she thought would have, you know, she never imagined she would still be, um, you know, leading these same um, fights as, as uh, and these same marches and these same conversations all these years later. Well, you know, I think especially with what happened with the overturning of Roe v. Wade, the effect that's going to have on generations to come especially young people today, really sent a message to a lot of um, young people around the country. And when the vote in Kansas happened, you know, regardless of whether you're a Democrat, Republican, independent, you know, people came out to vote because it's something that's going to really affect them. A lot of young people came out to vote. There are so many great young people around the country who are mobilizing their friends and having discussions and having meetings and encouraging people to register to vote. And just by virtue of seeing what happened in Kansas, getting all these young people out on issues that matter to them personally or to the generations to follow, you know, is really um, wonderful to see. And uh, I think, you know, we'll see in our own communities, you know, more and more young people. I mean, there are some people who are apathetic and will always be apathetic. But, you know, to really be able to identify, I mean, I can remember um, before Roe happened, I, I know what happened, not to me personally, but to friends and how they, you know, had to seek their health care um, in other places that uh, were just not the the cleanest, the nicest, and, you know, physically were harmed because of, you know, mm -hmm. how they had to have abortions. And I would hate to see us going back to those days. So I think, you know, to have young people get out and realize that what happened in the Supreme Court did not just happen at such a high level. It started at the ground roots level. That it's whoever you put in your local um, institutions, whoever you put in your state, whoever you put, you know, um, in your county really have an impact and can have an impact on something, you know, that is going to affect the whole country, such as the overturning of Roe v. Wade. So please, you know, get involved, you know, seeing so many more young people getting out and wanting to get involved and be more political. And uh, I applaud them and invite them, you know, to come on Sunday, invite them to, you know, to join our committee, 
you know, our Martin Luther King birthday committee. We're always um, on the lookout for younger people to come to, to represent their constituents and let us know, you know, what the, their community needs too. Growing, yeah. growing up in the South, segregated South, somehow instilled in me the urgency of doing whatever one could do to change the system. Our young people, fortunately, did not have to grow up with signs that said what you cannot do. And somehow, I think, though I fought hard to have those signs taken down, we need to rem share that story and to let our young people know the struggle of not being able to vote. It is taken for granted. When I first attempted to vote, I had to go four times before I was able to register. Each time I attempted to register and built up this long form of information that I'm sure the clerks, some of them could hardly read or understand, would take the sheet of papers and tear it up in front of me and dump it in the garbage can. It was just that blatant and that is all. I am now that the opportunity is ours. I encourage young people to learn more about their history and to know the importance of what change, what voting can do, what changes can be made. We are powerless without our young people, and we are so fortunate to have so many young people like those who participate in teens talk about racism, mm -hmm. who are leaders in their schools, who mm -hmm. know the importance of standing up and speaking up. So I too, Joe and Barbara, in encouraging our young people to become as active as they can because your vote counts, every vote counts. And it is important to ensure democracy that we meet up at the ballot box. Yes. You know, Helen, I just I just wanted to um, kind of balance uh, the scales a bit. I know we're talking about young people and the importance mm -hmm. of getting them involved and how much they're going to matter. But we also have among us some um, people who are um, a little bit older, such as uh, Theodora Lacey and Arnold Brown, who we will be honoring on Sunday also. Um, I know it's no secret, but both Arnold and Theodora turned 90 years old this year. And the two of them, as the co-chairs of the Monument Committee, were so instrumental in making that happen, of getting you know, the right people involved, knocking on the right doors, and um, really, uh, finding you know the right sculpture. I mean, we, I mean, I since Theodora knew Dr. King. I mean, she was the perfect person to help pick the right sculpture to show Dr. King in the light he should be shown in, to have him look as near to um, reality as the statue can be. And uh, so we're really going to pay tribute to these two definite icons who are living mm -hmm. amongst us. So as part, not just voting is important, but celebrating lives lived. And Theodore and Arnold will have a, a bit of a, an honor paid to them uh, on Sunday by all intendants. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. Yes. Well, I, I have to follow that up, that I agree. She, um, they are both icons in our community. We're so grateful to have them. And I know in addition to Miss Nellie Jenkins, we have Miss Armetta McQueen and Miss Deborah Adkins and Miss Tonette. Henry Duncan, all agreeing um, as well that you are an icon. Um, we are so um, grateful to have you both here and so generous of you to share your personal stories, as I know you do whenever you gather, um, to really illustrate, you know, Miss Lacey, that there was a time when, um, you know, these, uh, you know, the, the ability to vote you know, wasn't had by all or wasn't easy, you know, to gain access to even as they started to, you know, be bestowed upon different groups. Um, and that makes it even more important to never, you know, let the opportunity go by without exercising it for sure. And, you know, Barbara, I think you're, you know, sh you know, with with honoring 
both Miss Lacey and um, Dr. Brown. You know, it, it just reminds us, though, that at every Asian stage in life, <laughs> um, you know, we all have something to contribute. And there's also action that we can all do to still make our society reach, you know, where we need it to go. Um, you know, uh, you know, you, you talked about some of the important, um, you know, issues for sure. I want to make sure that we touch on the other important key issues that you want voters to really be aware of this issue um, with this event, though. I, I know that you had some real, um, you know, real goals in mind as you put it together. So either of you want to share, I know, what, what are some of the key issues that you want voters to be aware of this year um, that you're really using this event to help be a platform to? I know we've touched on, you know, some, but are there any others? I just want to make sure we, we get that out so people understand the importance of joining. Right. There, um, there's a wonderful quote from Dr. King about um, the ballot is stronger than the bullet. And that was a tagline I wanted to include on uh, this year, especially because of um, the gun violence that we're mm -hmm. facing and the importance of getting guns off the street out of the hands of people that shouldn't have them to, you know, get rid of assault weapons. Too many killings, um, Uvalde, Texas, you know, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, uh, too much hate in this country and people take up arms against one another. So by putting in the right people to do the right voting, to make sure that things that we all care about and so many of us, you know, who gather um, to celebrate Dr. King, where most of us are all of the same mind that we do believe in equality that we do believe in equal justice for all, that we do believe that there are too many guns, that we not we need to get them off the street. We need to put the right people in the right places to make sure that things we care about, you know, our love for humanity, for our planet, you know, matter. And we want this planet to be, you know, still spinning around, you know, thousands and millions of years from now. And to do that, we have to take care of Mother Earth, and uh, we have to make sure that the right people, you know, represent us and things we care about, you know, not just locally, not just in our state, but in Washington. So we are hoping that we just keep, you know, getting this message out there and reminding people um, however we can with music, with entertainment, with marches, with programs to um, get that, that word out. Helen, I earlier said that um, it takes a village, and I would be remiss if I did not include my sisters of Alpha Alpha Sorority, who taught me years ago the importance of voting. I was a sophomore in college when I became a member of Alpha Gamma Alpha, and while many Adults think of sorority as just fun gathering groups and doing all sorts of antics. That is not primarily what the African American sororities and fraternities do. And mm. so I learned the importance of voting when I was a, even back then as a young member of this most distinguished group of women. And so I thank them as they see they are still working to yes. see they run campaigns about voting along with other groups like the links and many of our churches that are involved in recognizing the importance of encouraging old young and whatever mm -hmm. to out to vote. So we we are a village and when we work together as a village, we can make a difference. We only have to look at the world filled with dictators to know the importance of democracy. Our democracy, it's fragile, and we need to do all we can to ensure that we maintain equality for all. Absolutely. And, and I have to say, I, I um, and as your circle here, I know your AKA sisters are, are uh, we've got a, our, our, we have two of them on our executive board of the YWCA, our president and our treasurer, Ms. Uh, Hollis Thomas and Ms. Heather Corey, both are, um, both represent, I know, um, but, uh, and, and uh, we also have with us Ms. 
Nylika McQueen Jeffries. Um, so I, I have to say, I mean, I think that that is important to share because there's so many groups that are out there. Um, your sorority is definitely one that that is is uh, always shows how the circle comes together and circles around, uh, you know, issues, circles around, um, you know, individuals um, in order to to push forward. There's so many groups out there, and I I hope that this conversation encourages any of the organizations you're connected to um, to come together and to join forces and to link um, and connect with. Uh, events like this one, um, with organizations like this one, um, you know, this it's a tremendous opportunity to be able to have all of these great groups um, work together side by side. Again, this is where the power comes from. The power comes from the individual votes. The power comes from the collective circles, you know, that we're all connected to um, and the diversity in those circles um, and all the voices. Um, doesn't matter what we look like, all our voices saying the same message. And Dr. King's words clearly need to be at the core of that. Um, so we want to make sure, again, that everyone knows where and how to get to the event, um, because it's rapidly approaching, the, the days are coming. Um, so uh, we also want you to be able to connect with the Dr. Martin Luther King Birthday Committee. Um, they have a Facebook page that's at MLK Birthday Committee. Um, they also, you can go to their website um, at the Martin Luther King Birthday Committee.com. And, um, you know, we also encourage you to, uh, you know, follow them on social media. Um, in addition to attending their events, they do have monthly planning meetings. They do have their, their large gathering where they celebrate Dr. King's life in January. But throughout the year, there are ways that you could stay connected to the committee. So again, for anyone who may have joined us now, um, or just anyone to make sure that they have it noted, tell us again when the event is and how um, folks can um, learn more about it and uh, where they can show up to be there. Well, the, the program begins at 3 p.m. at our statue to Dr. King on the Hackensack side of the Fairleigh Dickinson University campus. Um, it's really at the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Plaza. That area has been renamed as such. We are asking people to gather on the T-neck side of the footbridge that goes over the river um, at 245 and we'll march and sing together coming over to the event, um, which is this Sunday, August 21st at 3 p.m. at the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Plaza on the campus of Fairleigh Dickinson University on the Hackensack side of the river. We, we welcome you and encourage you to bring a friend so that we can begin our march to the ballot box. Yes, yes. And again, this march is just the beginning, folks. We've got to keep walking all the way to Election Day. Um, and, you know, it's definitely important to gather um, and definitely important, as I always say, um, you know, we will continue to give you opportunities, as I know, the committee will and, and other groups about if you, are, if you are not registered to vote, how you can register to vote. Um, but we also need you to make sure that you think about your values, what's important to you, and make sure that you are heading to the ballot with um, casting votes for um, people that we could put in office that reflect those values. Um, it makes a big difference. And as Barbara said, at every level, whether it's in your local community or whether it's a national position, they are all important and impacting um, us being able to see the equality that we want in our communities um, happen for sure. Um, and so with that, uh, thank you both so much for taking the time to be here. And I also want to thank, we also have Craig Cannon who's joined us today. Um, you know, we have uh, so many viewers and thanks to all those who, you know, um, joined us in the comments and, and, um, sent uh, their support, not only for um, Ms. Lacey and the committee, obviously for our, our leadership at the YWCA as well. Um, you know, again, as Ms. Lacey said, and I, uh, you know, share her words again, it takes a village. Um, we all have a part to do. And, um, you know, please uh, take some time to join um, on uh, the 21st and every other event that you can. Um, to educate yourself, to learn, to uh, engage 
and engage others around you as well. Bring a friend, as um, as was noted. Um, this is our responsibility, um, and we we need to uh, together link arms to make change. Thank you so much again for taking the time to be here today. Um, any last words, please? Uh, I, I I never get um, tired of hearing either of you speak, and and I know our viewers feel the same way. Any last words to share? I, I just want to say thanks for the opportunity, Helen, and thanks for all you do. Um, I know uh, your um, work at the YW is really happened after I left, so I can't say, you know, I give credit, <laughs> have any credit in what's going on, um, but it's just wonderful to see, you know, all that you're doing, and, you know, thank you for, for recognizing us and the work that we do. We're glad that you're one of our partners, have always been a sponsor of uh, what we do, and we appreciate it, and uh, Theodora, it's always an honor and a pleasure to, uh, to speak with you. Um, you are as Helen is one of my sheroes, and uh, I look forward to many more events and um, wonderful things to come out of our relationship. It's only together that we make a difference. And Martin Luther King said, the question, the most important question is, what are you doing for us? And I always keep that in mind. And if we take that with us every day, we will make a difference unknowingly in the lives of so many of us. Well, what a beautiful way to end. I stand on your shoulders, both of you. And, um, you know, we'll continue, I know, with our leadership at the YW to, to push forward and, and uh, stay linked arms. Everyone have a wonderful day, and we hope to see you on the 21st. Be well, everyone. Thank you. Bye.